Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi na'amaduhu wa nusalli wa nusalli ma'ala rasooli al-kareem Amma ba'd, faqad qala Allahu tabarak wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Majid wa al-Furqan al-Hamid, a'udhu billahi min al-Shaitan al-Rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Huwa al-Ladhi khalaqa lakum ma fi al-Ard jami'a ثم استوى إلى السماء فسوهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العظيم وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في شأن حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك سلم صل عليه Welcome to the brave ones who've managed to get through the freezing cold to come here and we're continuing with the lectures on science and the Quran and I hope you're a little bit lucky today because I've, I've got a couple of things to show you so anybody know what this is? I don't say lamp, I know it's a lamp, but I mean... Okay, good, we'll come back to that. What about this? Anybody know what this is? Can you see that? It's not a trick question. No. I'm sorry? Uh, is this, are these raspberries you're going to eat, is it? Can't you see that? Shall I pass it around? Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, wait one second. Heaven's sake, you're going to make me work today, isn't it? Oh. Right. Can you see that? Sorry? It's not pieces of asteroid, is it? Asteroid, crikey. <laughs> if I was be so lucky and be rich. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, not a trick question. You don't know what this is? Sorry? Dunk? Okay. This lecture's going to be a bit of a challenge now, isn't it? Crikey. <laughs> This is something I picked up on the way here. It's just normal dirt. Okay. <laughs> right, but interesting, someone said gunk. It does look, it, it, it looks worthless, doesn't it? You're not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to sell this on eBay, am I? Yeah, who wants to buy some dirt? And I'll throw it away. You're not going to pick it up, isn't it? Oh, let's go after that. But the, this topic I've got today is about the Earth and the world we live in. And the, the verse I recited, we'll come back to that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us life from this. We get our fruit, vegetables, crops, animals, get all that from this. So for us it's worthless, isn't it? But actually it's not, it's priceless. So the point I want to make is we don't appreciate the things right in front of us. Allah has given us so much in this world and He's given us this. He says, take this and from that we can get an apple, we can get an orange, we can get a strawberry, you know, we can get, someone said raspberry or something, we can get grapes, we can get so much beauty, right, from, from this. Next time you cook a handi, right, cook some onions, onions from this, potatoes from this, rice from this, the bread you get is from wheat, wheat is from this, right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything we need. 
with regards to you know the earth no one can say oh I wish I could get this wish I could get that it's there you can reach up you can take a, a, an apple out of a tree and eat it and it's it's basically free and it will grow again the next year mashallah thank you yeah that's fine even this is from the earth all right the cows eat the grass the grass grows from dirt and you get fresh milk and the cows get milk from but we're coming to this topic later on but the cows get milk from their intestines and intestines are dirty things and we drink the milk but it's good for us and the coffee it's from the earth so you know we don't realize you know how lucky we are and this try and work it out if you can work it out but i'll come back to that Crikey, you know everybody makes this in a different way. So let's let's try and understand a little bit about the Earth. Okay, we've talked about the age, and people have estimated about four and a half billion years old. Now you'll get people who say, "Oh, it's four point five six. Yeah, 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 it's fine. You know, congratulations. The Earth is absolutely huge. And again, these estimates of weight are just estimates, but people are agreeing on about. Six times ten to the twenty-one tons. That's uh, five. Five. That's five point nine with twenty zeros after it. Now, the Earth's mass is actually increasing. Does anybody know why? And it's also decreasing. Does anybody know why? I've left some dots there, so you have to fill that in. Good, right, glad to see everybody's awake. Right, it's increasing because space dust is also always falling on the Earth. Asteroids are falling, really small ones, particles, and they're hitting the Earth, the ones that survive, and they're increasing the mass of the Earth. And people estimate around uh, 40,000 to 100,000 tons a year. And why is it decreasing, what do you think? Good. Right, glad to see everybody's really enthusiastic. Once on, it's decreasing because the Earth is losing gases like hydrogen and helium. It's actually losing them. So people don't know whether overall the mass is increasing or overall it's decreasing, but it's not much. It doesn't matter how, how much because it's not very much. The temperature of the Earth, although I've written between sort of minus 89 and plus 57 degrees, those are, those are in extreme areas only, like the deserts or the, the North and South Poles. Usually it doesn't vary very much. In the UK, it varies from, I don't know, minus 10 to plus 30, it's not very much. This, this, the Earth orbits the Sun, you know it orbits at, uh, every 365 days, actually it doesn't. It's 365 and a quarter days it takes to orbit the Sun. So it turns a little bit more than it should. So every four years we add an extra day, because every year you have a quarter of a day. But if the leap year is divisible by 100, you don't add the day. And if it's divisible by 400, you add the day. So this won't happen in our lifetime, I don't think. And the Earth's rotation is actually getting slower. I don't know if you know. I'm not saying you should feel it, but it's actually getting slower. And in about you know, 150, 200 million years time, one day will be 25 hours. And the reason it's getting slower is the sea, the friction of the sea on the ground is slowing it down. The, 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 the tides, they're slowing it down. If you're on the earth a few hundred million years ago, when it was first created, so a few billion years ago, one day was actually about 12 hours, it was going really fast. So it's been slowing down ever since. 
and one day is not 24 hours, one day is actually 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds. So every, every day is actually 4 minutes shorter than it should be. And believe it or not, there's another rock that orbits the earth like the moon. It's a very small piece of rock. It's only 60 meters and every 95 years it goes around the earth. And it's called, it's got a very, you know, memorable jazzy name. It's called 2002 AA29. All right. The earth slightly, is slightly bigger around the equator because it's, it's got a little bit of a bulge because of the rotation. But it's not much. It's, it's more or less, for our purposes, it's more or less a, a sphere. There's not much difference. Um, and you often get asked the question in a quiz, what's the most common element on Earth? And people give different answers, but surprisingly, the most common element on Earth is iron. And then it's oxygen. You don't find oxygen, this is not oxygen in the atmosphere. This is oxygen, you know, stuck in rocks and things like that, like iron oxide. For the first billion years, the oxygen being produced in the oceans was reacting and producing iron oxide. That's why, you know, there's so much iron around. But if you go to the core, it's mostly iron. And if you go to the crust, the crust of the earth is like a, a thin film. If you go an apple, it's like the skin of the apple. That's what we live on. We live on the crust. So the crust is more oxygen. Now, the Earth goes round its axis, but it's actually tilted. I'm sure you've heard this. So if you imagine a ball, I haven't got a... Imagine an orange going round and round like that. If you tilt it so it goes round and round like this, that's how the Earth's going round and round. There's a, there's a picture on page three. Not to scale, right? Don't know how it's come out in black and white. But I've got the colour one. Yeah, it's not bad. So the Earth goes round, see the North and South Poles? That's the axis on which it goes round and it's tilted. So in June it's tilted towards the... Yeah. So in, in June it's tilted towards the Sun. And in winter, it's tilted away from the sun, you know, where we live. That's why we have summer, and that's why we have winter. That tilt is enough to give us our seasons. <coughs> Most of the earth is water. I mean, the surface of the earth, 70%, some say three quarters. And out of that 70%, Only 3% is fresh water, so most of it is sea, 97% is sea water or salty water. Only 3% is fresh water. And of that 3%, most of it is frozen in the Arctic and the Antarctic. Most is actually frozen. Only 1% is not frozen. And that's where we get our fresh water from, from lakes, rivers, groundwater, and a little bit in the atmosphere. It's not much, but we need it for survival. Now, we, we live in, we breathe the, the air around us. This is uh, called the boundary layer we live in, all right? The atmosphere. Now, this atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. It's not actually oxygen. It's mostly nitrogen we're breathing. And only about one-fifth or 21% is oxygen. So our lungs extract the oxygen from the nitrogen. If you're a deep sea diver, they replace nitrogen with helium. So they have 20% oxygen and 80% helium. And that's why they got all these high voices, the, the divers. Because helium is very light and underwater nitrogen is really heavy. You know, at, at those depths, at those pressures, it's really heavy, it's actually dangerous. 
So they replace the nitrogen with helium. Nitrogen's inert, it doesn't react very much, which is lucky for us, I suppose. Then there's a little bit of carbon dioxide, a little bit of methane and other stuff. If you go deep down into the earth, it has different layers. Obviously, it's like an apple. You've got the skin, which is the crust, which is what we live on. If you go deep down, you've got the mantle and you've got the cores. And deep down, the core is actually molten. It's molten uh, metal. And it's mostly sort of iron, nickel, but it's under a lot of pressure and it's really hot. They don't know how hot it is, they can just guess because no one's actually gone down there. You, no one's drilled a hole that's gone down there. You can't, it's just, you just can't do it. It's physically very, very difficult. And uh, because it's iron and it's going round, it creates a magnetic field. <coughs> and that protects us from the sun. And Earth is the only place that scientists know of that's got water in all its three states. There's liquid, solid and gas. The Earth goes round the sun about 18, 19 miles per second and it spins at a thousand miles per hour. So we are actually moving at a thousand miles per hour going round and round so if anyone felt dizzy this morning that was a reason right? and we're going around the sun at 18 miles per second so again if you felt dizzy again that was probably the reason right? so it's pretty fast right? you're not half asleep this morning aren't you? Okay. fine I'll just push on All right, I'll just push on Believe it or not, the Earth's orbit around the Sun is not completely circular, it's elliptical. So, sometimes we're close to the Sun, sometimes we're further away. It's not very much, it's only a couple of million miles. And it doesn't change... <laughs> that wasn't meant to be a joke, was it? It doesn't change the weather. The weather doesn't change because we're a little bit closer to the Sun. It's actually the tilt that's more, that has greater impact. Because the oceans are really good at absorbing and balancing energy. But if we were a little bit closer or a little bit further away, either be too hot or too cold to survive. Believe it or not, the Earth produces a, its own uh, um, heat because of its core radioactivity. But without the sun, I don't think we'd be able to survive. So the Earth has everything in it it's a it's a the, the perfect design for us to live in basically and live on Allah's and we can see now Allah's made it such an amazing design that we can live on it we have everything we need and it's in the perfect position and it's a perfect time for us to be here if we were on this earth 100 million years ago we probably wouldn't survive. If we're going to be on this earth another hundred million years in the future, I doubt we'll survive. The perfect position, perfect time. <coughs> right, if we turn to the pictures, The, the top two are some very famous pictures taken by Apollo 8. Apollo 8 was the first spacecraft to go around the moon. Uh, I mean the manned spacecraft to go around the moon. As they're coming around the moon, they're looking at the moon and suddenly they saw the Earth rising up. And I saw the video clip and uh, they, were, they were saying, quickly get the camera, get the camera. So the astronauts were getting it and they took a picture and they goes, no, no, it's a black and white one, get the color one. I don't know if you remember, we had colour and black and white a long time ago, right? Well, um, so they got the colour camera and he took that picture. And it was a little bit tilted because he was in a bit of a panic, but he took it. And that's the first time anybody's seen the Earth rise. 
above the moon. You, you know how the sun rises above, you know, in the in the horizon. This is the earth rise on the horizon of the moon, and it was such a it had such a big impact around the world. This picture, and for us, it's yeah, yeah, okay, I can see the earth, and yeah, so what? Yeah, okay, it's fine. And we talked about the tilt, and people often ask. How big is the Earth compared to the other planets? I mean, we're talking about the planets closest to the Sun. Well, you've got Mercury on the left. Then you've got Venus. Venus is very similar to the Earth in terms of its size. But Venus is a hot, a very hot ball of gas. You, you probably wouldn't survive a few seconds down there. Even the spacecraft that have landed on Venus, they melted within a, you know, an hour. It's pretty inhospitable, that's my point. If you're a little bit closer to the sun, we'd be like Venus, wouldn't be living. If we're a little bit further away, it would be like Mars, just cold and dead. If anybody offers you to go to Mars, just say no. All right. Now there is, they've got adverts, go to Mars. And someone's even saying a one-way trip. They're even saying, we can't bring you back, we can take you there. Well, yeah, 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 say yes to that. Yeah. I'm mad at oh, people. <coughs> so, I started this lecture showing you this, these asteroids, right? All these, what were they? Uh, raspberries? Yeah. MashaAllah. Yeah, come, come, please, take a seat. Right, we get our life from this dirt, okay? We are actually made from this dirt because human beings, they eat the food from the dirt and they go back into this dirt. So this is, our, this is the life of the planet, this thing. And no matter where you go, you can find fresh water and I don't mean you put the tap on, I don't mean that. If you're in the desert, you've got wells. If you're in the Arctic and Antarctic, you've got, you've got springs, believe it or not, and you've got the ice you can, you can melt. If you're in the sea, yeah, you, you've got water all around you, but you have to purify it. You can't drink the sea water. But you've got the rain, most rain actually falls in the sea. Wherever you go, you can find fresh water. Even if you're in uh, the desert, forget the wells, there are special plants, if you manage to find them, you can squeeze them and water comes out. And if you watch those programs, you know, who is that guy, Madman, Bear Grylls? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he tells you where to get water from, he goes, yeah, if you go that uh. <clears throat> Allah's given us night and day, you know, it, it's, we can rest at night time, we can, we can work during the day. He's given us weather which is actually quite stable. Oh, I know you hear about hurricanes here, but, but do you know what I'm, no, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know. I, I keep seeing this, this town that every year gets flattened by tornadoes, right? It's called Tornado Alley. And every year they keep complaining, oh, another tornado's hit us. Look, my house is flattened. Yeah. That's because you live in Tornado Alley, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest, if you're going to live somewhere called Tornado Alley, you're going to get tornadoes, isn't it? All right? So I'm not saying the weather is stable there because it's called Tornado Alley. Live somewhere where it's not called Tornado Alley. So the weather, believe it or not, is actually quite stable. For the last 8,000 years, it's, there's been no ice ages, there's been no huge uh, global catastrophes. Yeah, you get bad weather. But generally, you know where it's coming from. Generally, you can actually design against it if you're bothered. But most countries aren't bothered to design against their weather. And most countries are poor, too poor to do that. Look what we can get from the ground. Apart from the soil. We can get all our fuel from the ground, all our fossil fuels come from there. We get nuclear fuel from the ground, from rocks, radioactive rocks. 
which we obviously we purify. You can get gas and coal from the ground. Allah has put all this in the ground for us. And, and has told us you can use it. So that's what I'm saying. This oil, gas and coal has taken millions of years to evolve into a, to a substance we can use. That's why it's a perfect time for us to be here. And there's places, oil's coming out of the ground. If you go to Trinidad, they've got oil coming, literally coming out, oozing out the ground. And we, we, we parked our car there and the, the, the tires got stuck because it, so, it was so warm. The, 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 it wasn't oil, it was tarmac coming out. It was, but it was oil, thick oil coming out. And the tires got stuck. And they said, if you go further, the tires will start burning. And there's a famous story that, is it Captain Cook? He repaired his ship with that tarmac. Yeah, it's very interesting. And not just that, forget the ground, you can get energy from the sun, from the wind, from tides and waves, from, you know, geothermal is free. We, I was in Iceland recently, and 90% of their energy is from geothermal sources. It's free. Literally, they take the heat out of the ground, put it in their homes. That's it. And it's really cheap. It's so cheap they can put their heating on full and open all their windows. And you think that's a waste, but actually it's, it's going to come in the atmosphere anyway from the ground, isn't it? It's just going via their homes. And wherever you are, you always find life. They found life, believe it or not. I think one and a half kilometers deep in rock there's bacteria, there's no sunlight, there's water there, there has to be water, there's no sunlight and they get their energy from the radioactive decay of the rock. That's incredible. So wherever you go you find life. In the darkest caves you find life. <coughs> you find uh, fish in the hottest place on earth. You don't believe me, do you? No. If you turn the page, right, to page, page seven. So can I have a hand up, please? Yeah, of course. Can you reach? Thank you. <coughs> we turn to page seven. Pupfish. That water is so salty, you could, you could smell the salt. It's the hottest place on earth and you've got, you got a whole um, species of fish. Pupfish, they're protected. Go to the coldest place on earth, Antarctica. Anybody guess the temperatures in Antarctica? What they go down to? Good, good guess. Right, it regularly goes down to minus 70 and these are warm-blooded animals and they live there they breed, that's where they breed there's no food for them to eat I don't know if you know about emperor penguins uh, the, the father looks after the egg and the mums go they grow, get fish and then they come all the way back and then they regurgitate all their fish for their young and then by that time it gets summer and then they can start fishing in there minus 70 and Allah's put life there you know that's absolutely incredible hottest place on earth you wouldn't expect fish oh you've got fish there the water is so hot you can touch it it's actually very hot you can't they actually say to you uh, every half an hour have a glass of water, it's so hot, Death Valley. You know, the, the name should really sort of ring some alarm bells, you know, Death Valley. Yeah, so if anybody offers you a house in Tornado Valley, you say, nah, it's okay. It's very, very kind of you, but that's fine. Right, back to page four. <coughs> Allah's given us Okay, do you know what this is now? Can you see the white around the outside? 
You see this white on the outside, on the base? Anybody guess what this is? If I said to you, you can eat it. Sorry? Salt. Salt. This is salt. This is how salt comes out of the ground. And it's sort of dribbling off and, you know, making that. This is salt. So if you've got any chips, you can come along. And you can just do that. Let me see. It's a salt lamp. Isn't that incredible? The salt mines, I'll, I'll show you some pictures, are absolutely incredible. So what we even get salt out of the ground, it's just there. Just dig it up. This can last a family a lifetime, I think. Allah's given us that, you know. And you need it for survival. So so much comes, this, this building's built of brick, right? Anybody know where brick, which material brick comes from? You lot live very sheltered lives, right? <laughs> brick comes from clay. I've got clay in the field out there, you can just dig up some clay. Obviously you've got to put it in ovens and fire it up and mould it. But, you know, our building material comes from the ground. Limestone, granite, it all comes from the ground, it's all there. So Allah has given us so much from the ground. Concrete comes from the ground. You get cement separately, you get aggregate separately, you add water, which comes from the ground as well. And you get concrete. This is a, the earth is actually a very flat place to live. People don't live much on, you know, rocky, steep areas. If you look around the world, you rarely find it. Yeah, you find the odd place. Most people live where it's flat. I mean, can you imagine if we're living on the mountain and I'm teaching you and uh, you're down there. Can you hear me? Uh, where have you gone? Have you slipped off? Oh, he's, he's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and there's seven billion people now on the planet. And there's still, you know, we've still got the ability to grow enough food if we're sensible. And there's... We, we can live. There's still plenty of room. You know, some places are still hardly populated. Australia is hardly populated. It's absolutely huge. I mean, some are overly populated, like, uh, you know, Hong Kong and places like that. Allah renews, renews rock. Volcanoes are so important to, you know, the Earth's survival. Allah renews a rock and replenishes it over, over time. Geological time is very long, but Allah does that. And we can even see the Earth's history via fossils. The oldest fossils, bacteria, are about three and a half billion years old in Australia. The Earth is four and a half billion years old. Those bacteria survived even before you had oxygen in the atmosphere, can you believe it? So even at that time, Allah put life on the earth. And you can see the dying people often ask me, do the dinosaurs actually, do they actually live? Yeah, of course they lived, of course they were here. We've got fossil evidence. Why did Allah put them here? Then I've, got, I've got some theories, a number of theories around. We'll come back to that, because we're doing a section on life and stuff. Allah allows us to travel on the earth. He could have made it very difficult for us. He could have made the seas so stormy, you couldn't travel on them. But He hasn't. Yeah, you get the odd storm, right? But most, most business is still done via the sea. It's just that ships have got bigger. The container ships are absolutely huge now. They can travel halfway around the world and then unload their cargo and travel back again. So even now, you know, in this modern age, most business, most movement of goods is done by sea. And Allah says in the Quran, you know, well, I've, well, I've given you the ocean so you can do business, you can travel. So it means that system will still happen because He said it in the Quran. The Quran is the truth. It's going to happen. Air, air transport is very expensive, sea transport is very cheap, especially if you have a huge tanker. Most gas that comes into this country now 
actually comes from the sea. I mean, it tr gets transported in by ship from the Middle East. North Sea gas is running out. So now we are actually importing more gas than we're actually producing. And the earth allows us to be born. We can be born here. We can live on the earth. We can be buried here. So Allah has made the earth you know, self-regulating. No one goes to a field and says, you know what, I'm going to clean this field up today. It looks a bit dirty. It doesn't. It looks clean. It looks beautiful. Grass, trees. No one goes around cleaning it up. Mountains, the rock, they look, they look amazing. Arctic landscape, no one goes, you know, let's get this brush and pan and clean this up. You just don't, don't do that. If an animal dies in the field, a few weeks later it's gone. The earth has cleaned it up. Obviously while it's, you know, decomposing is a bit, bit disgusting, but once it's gone, it's gone. <coughs> and Allah has given the earth oceans Alaikum Come in, come in, please take her hand out. <coughs> Allah has given us more ocean than land. And He's done that for a reason. Because the oceans stabilize the Earth's climate. The oceans in the winter they take very long to cool down. In the summer, they take very long to warm up. So they, their temperature is very stable and they stabilize the, 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 the weather patterns of the earth, believe it or not. The reason Britain is warmer than Moscow or New York is because of the oceans. And again, I've got a whole lecture on oceanography and how the oceans impact and how Allah has designed that. Now people often ask me, where does the, the name Earth come from? And you know, I've got no idea and they've got no idea, right? I can tell you where the, the, the names of the planets came from. They're, they're all named after false gods. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, they're all Neptune, they're all false gods. People used to worship. Where Earth comes from the Arab? Could be true. Could be true. I mean, we'd be happy with that answer, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So the verse I mentioned, where Allah says, He's created everything for you on this earth. And now I've, I've explained a little bit what we can get, how we're benefiting from the earth, from this worthless soil which I can't sell on eBay, right? But this is our life. To this piece of rock, you know, which we add to our chips, right? And our, and our salam, you know, and our biryani and all that, and our samosa. This is salt, by the way. It's a salt lamp, and there's salt coming off. Look, yeah. It's actually, too much of it's actually very bad for you, but <laughs> But we need things like sodium, potassium, we need them. Our brain actually works from these salts. So the, this is life-giving. Too much of it is bad, obviously, but it's life-giving. Without that, our brain would stop working. Look, okay, that's from the ground. And I've got some pictures of salt mines. They're incredible, absolutely incredible. <clears throat> so Allah has said to us, look, He's given you so much. Oh, He's given us so much. And not just that, then Allah talks about the seven heavens again. And I'll put that for a reason because I want to go back into the dimensions again. He turned to the heavens and He fashioned them, He made them in a very special way. The seven heavens or the several heavens. He has knowledge of all things. So Allah has put the earth in one uh, side and He's put the seven heavens on the other side. He's given equal weight to both, which means He's given equal importance to both. So the earth is very special, very unique. 
Well, some things can't be very unique, but it's unique, right? It's special and it's unique. And there's so much in it. And well, I've just gone through a few examples. And luckily, we're not like Venus, because we'd be dead, right? Luckily, we're not like Mars, because we'd be dead. We're right in the perfect place. And Allah has given us everything. You can't say, I wish I had this. Everything you want is there. You just have to apply your mind. People are living in the forest, in the jungle, in the deserts. Who's this other guy? Um, uh, there's another guy that wanders around, you know, eating off the land. It's not just Bear Grylls, it's somebody else. So he, he once went to uh, the Amazon and he, he's got a friend there. He goes, let's live out for a few weeks. He goes, all right. He goes, what do you need? He goes, I just need this. And he took out an axe. That's all I need. Everything I, everything I want, my food, my shelter, everything's out there. If you have a goat, I know you, you haven't got goats, but if you have a goat, it'll eat anything. And you can get milk from the goats, you can get uh, meat from the goat. Just leave it out, it'll eat anything. Put the sheep out in the fields, put the cows out. They just eat what grows free, the grass, from, from this. They just eat it. Yeah, and you can tell they're eating it because their mouths are constantly moving. And that's, that's all they do. And Allah has designed them for that. So here's some pictures, page 5. <coughs> As I said, what Allah has given us is incredible. Because Allah says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا مَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى He says, to Allah belongs what's in the heavens and what's on earth and what's also underneath the soil. So you've got this soil and underneath the soil, look what you have. This is a, these two pictures are quarries. You, you probably won't see quarries because they're hidden away, but if you look at the picture on the left, do you see those little machines with the arms? Those are big excavators. So you can see the scale now of this. They're probably, uh, this is probably marble or limestone, something like that, is building material. You've heard of kitchen units with, with marble tops and stuff. This is where they get it from. So those are little machines. I mean, they're big machines, but look at, look at the size of them compared to the quarry. Look what Allah's given us. This has taken hundreds of millions of years. And it's free. It's there. A marble quarry on the right, okay? If you look on the bottom right of that picture, see those lights? That's a machine. So the man's in the machine, you can see the scale now of this picture. And I've stolen all of these pictures off the internet. Right. That's where you get your marble from. Massive quarries like that. You turn the page, page number six. There's another huge quarry. I didn't know Belgium had anything to be honest, but it's got a quarry. These are big holes in the ground. I don't know if you know, in, in, is it in Devon? They've got this, this big uh, greenhouse thing with all the plants of the world in it. Equat Center, Equatel, something like that. That's, in the, that's built in the quarry, an old quarry. So this is a stone quarry in Belgium. On the bottom left is a salt mine. This is where you get this salt from, all right? This is actually from Pakistan, this one. But the salt mine on the left is Romania. Now the scale is, there's a little fence at the bottom. Can you see that fence? You can probably see the little lines holding up the, the top part of the fence. That's the, that's the scale. Where that black blob is on the left, there's a little fence behind there. That's how tall a man would be. That's a salt mine. That's incredible in Romania. On the right, that's a salt mine in Pakistan. It, it attracts a quarter of a million visitors per year, that salt mine. 
it's it's probably a mile it goes a mile into the mountain and they built a little mosque that's a mosque built out of salt bricks so again you know you can read your namaz and you can sit there and take out your chips and just touch um, Right, page seven. I've, I've mentioned this verse before, but because we're talking about the day and the night, I want to mention it again that Allah's given us uh, everything that we need, even the sun and the moon. He's basically said they're yours for your convenience. Look at that! This massive ball of exploding hydrogen, right? is there for our benefit. That's incredible. Who, who else could be so generous? It's like one country saying to another country, it's not like this, but one, do you know what, don't worry, we'll look after all of you. We'll look after all of your food needs, your energy needs, your health needs, we will do it for you. Who, which country going to do that? Yeah, Allah's done this for us. He's look, I've given you everything you want. And He's He's prepared the earth for us, basically. He said, Look, I've the earth has taken four and a half billion years to get to this point, now it's ready for you. So this verse, you know, is a good summary. The earth we spread it out so you can live on it. We set on it mountains standing firm. Again, I got a lecture on geology and, and what mountains do is very important. We caused all kinds of things to grow in due balance. It's a very beautiful system Allah's made where things grow in balance. We have provided you with a means of living and also for those whom you, you have not provided for. We, we don't feed the sheep every day. The sheep feed themselves. So Allah says, we've done that for you. There is not a thing, but with us are the stores thereof. And we do not send it down except in a known measure. So Allah's given us everything in the right proportion, even for seven billion people. If we're sensible, there's enough place to live, enough food to eat, enough oxygen to breathe. He could have made oxygen a scarce resource. We could be having wars over oxygen or wars over water. We're not. If we're sensible, we don't need to. And just to reinforce the point, you know, pupfish, there are actually a huge amount of animals in Death Valley and some humans live there as well. And the penguins, minus 70. And they're happily, you know, plodding along. Well, not that happily, they do feel, you know, but they're happily there. Yeah. Minus 70. It's the coldest place on Earth. I think the coldest temperature has been recorded there, minus 80 something. So when Allah says, In the samawati wal arub, wa layli wal nahar, in the creation of the Earth, in the changing of day and night, in the ship which runs upon the sea, See, for the profit of mankind, see, even now, 1400 years later, despite all our technological advances, we still have to use the sea for business. The maritime industry is absolutely huge. You can even get gold from the sea, I don't know if you know. There's enough gold in the sea to make everybody rich. That's a good business plan for anybody who wants to. Just make me a 10% partner and be absolutely fine. Allah gives life to the dead earth. You have a, a... If I put a brick out there outside, within a year, you're going to get stuff growing on the brick. I've got stuff growing on my car. Now, I don't mean I don't wash the car, all right? If you look, you know where the window joins it? If you look, there's always moss there for cars. There's, there's moss growing. 
You've got stuff growing on your car. You know, life wants to grow, it wants to grow anywhere. I had a tree growing in from a building recently, we had to take it out. So Allah says, I revive the earth after its death in the beasts of all kinds that he scatters in the earth. In the change of the winds and the subjected clouds between the sky and the earth. And then, These are signs for people who are wise. So the signs are all around us, we're just blind. And I talked about the rock cycle. This is a very basic diagram of rock cycle. If you've done you know, geography, you should have learned about it. But the rocks go through a cycle. They start volcanically, they get messed around, they get created into stuff we can use, like um, igneous rocks, like marble, like granite, which are metamorphic, and then they go back to being volcano again go through a whole cycle and it keeps the, the the earth the earth geology stable and it's a sediment it's this soil actually is 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 rock bits of rock and water the sahara is actually the fertilizer for africa i don't know if you know the winds blow the, 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 the sand from the Sahara to the Amazon and the, when it rains and nutrients, it's not just water, water comes with nutrients, that's from the winds and the uh, sand of the Sahara. So Allah has made this whole system. No one goes to Africa with a massive fertilizer and say, yeah, I think I'll fertilize this jungle. No, Allah's doing it naturally. So the deserts have their use. You know, I mentioned oceans, I forgot to mention one thing about the oceans, although we go, we're on to page 9 now, just the last couple of pages now. Um, people estimate that at times up to half our oxygen comes from the oceans because of the plankton and the, the um, uh, plants that grow. And if you see satellite pictures, there's huge areas of green in summer and that's releasing oxygen and they just found this out recently you know my question is what are scientists up to don't they didn't they know this before just learning these things now they don't even know where the waters come from in from on the earth there's quite a lot of it so i mean they're a bit slow in some areas we should actually you know push them along a bit come on work it out sort it out please I think you're so great. Well, I want to talk about dimensions because one of the common questions I get is, is this the only Earth in the universe? And there's actually a verse about this. And I didn't have a chance to go into dimensions in much detail, but this is a summary of the dimensions that physicists say exist, all right? And to be honest, they're guessing, but there you go. So you've got one, two, three, which is length, breadth, and height. You've got four, which is time time you can't control, you're stuck in there. Then you've got stuff which is beyond our perception and there's nothing we can do about it. It's there but we don't know where, how, who, why, right? So the future and the past, they're in dimensions but we have no control over them. Other universes are in other dimensions, we don't know about them. And there's also different, different possible outcomes. You know, if you make if you make a change here, what's the outcome? That again is a dimension of its own, right? And Allah says in uh, Surah Mu'minun, yeah. We have created above you seven ways. We haven't done this for no reason, we've done it for a reason. <coughs> We are not unmindful <coughs> of creation. And here Allah uses the word Taraik, which is from Tariqa. It's a plural of, uh, uh, of Tariqa. Rather than Asma, rather than sky. So what, what he's saying is this. He's saying there are 
pathways between these dimensions. In other words, <coughs> they can be experienced and controlled. <coughs> Allah hasn't just created them for no reason, they're there for a reason. You could argue Barzakh is a dimension, you could argue that. Jannah is a dimension. Jahannam is a, you can argue that, I don't know how true it is. But we can't see Barzakh. If you go to the graveyard, you can't see the souls. Before people are born, you can't see them. We, no one's, very few people can see Jannah. The Prophet could see it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was once praying and he started walking forwards <coughs> and reach, reaching his hand out. And then he started walking back. People asked him after the prayer, what, what happened? He goes, the fruits of Jannah were right in front of me. I was going to pick one. And if I was to pick it, you'd be eating the rest of your life. You know, until Day of Judgment you'd be eating. So, those dimensions, there was no barriers for him. So when Allah says, Dara'iq, this was, the Prophet had power over these ways, وسلم, he had no in, in, uh, uh, barriers for future and past. Some things he, he's, he's explained to us uh, like he was there. Because he's been there, he's been in the future, he's been in the past. It's, it's the same for him, present, past, future, it's the same. And that's what we call his ilm ghaib his knowledge of the unseen. And when Allah says, we, you know, we've given these dara'iq, the Prophet وسلم, he obviously has power over these paths, he can choose whichever one he wishes. So again, We have made for you everything on this earth and we fashioned the heavens. But he hasn't said we've done the heavens for you. He hasn't said that. He says we've done this. But we even the physicists who are non-Muslims, they have an inkling that Allah's done something there, but we don't know what it is. But again, Allah's put the earth at, at the same level as all of his other creation. So the earth is a very special place. And from Surah Mulk, Alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin tibaqa We have made the seven heavens superimpose on each other. Ma tara fi khalqir rahmani min tafawud You won't find any fault in there. Allah says, look for any fault. Then he says, Farji al basar look again. Don't just look once, look twice. Hal dara min fatur. Will you see any error, any crack? Will you see any weakness? Will you see any inconsistency? You know, if, if, if man produces something, there's always a problem with it, right? I can show you anything man produces, and I can show you a problem with it. I say, look, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit wrong here. Oh, this isn't very nice. Look, can you see it's not particularly straight there? But you can't do it with what Allah's done. Everything has its place, everything is perfect. The sun doesn't say, you know what, I need to correct my motion next week. I need to just stop for a little one second and carry on again. The sun doesn't say that. The moon doesn't say, right, uh, I'm going a little bit fast, I'd better slow down a bit. No. no. Everything's Everything's done, everything's perfect. The, the bacteria doesn't say, right, you know, today I think I have a little bit of a rest. No, no, it does its job. The, the cow doesn't say, I think I'll stop producing milk today. I think I'll have a bit of a break, go on a little bit of a holiday. No, it doesn't say that. It just carries on. If you look at uh, 6512, Allah who lady khalaqa sabah asmawat wa min al ardi mithlahunna, Allah has created the seven heavens and a similar number of the earth. Wa min al ardi mithlahunna, a similar number of the earth. So, there are other earths around. 
Now again, this could mean Jannah, I don't know. Could be Jahannam, I don't know, right? But I don't think it means another earth like this one and we're living, someone else like us living on. I don't think it means that. These are other dimensions. So there are other earths around, but we don't know exactly what it means. So it's not just seven heavens, actually he's made in every of these heavens, he's got an earth. So these are beyond our reach and comprehension. I don't think we'll find another earth in this universe. You know, like, like this. <coughs> Even one great Vali actually said to me once, he said, look, Jannah is in this place. He mentioned a place, all right? And I didn't understand what he was saying. Um, but, because he didn't know about dimensions. He didn't know the English word. But I think he, when he said it to me, that's what he was trying to say, dimensions. <coughs> I can't believe I've told you that information. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, I shouldn't have. <clears throat> so Allah has power over all things. Right. Now if you turn to the last page, page 11. <clears throat> Just so, for a bit of background. That's a picture of the earth. Taken from Mars, yeah, it's come out well in black and white, all right. <clears throat> so as you can see, if you're on Mars, and let's hope you don't go there, right, but if you're on Mars, you can see the Earth like we can see the Moon. Like the Moon has phases, half a Moon, new Moon, three quarters, that's how you're going to see the Earth. And you see the Moon as well, if you've got a telescope. And the Earth's crust, or if you go down into the Earth, this is what the earth looks like. The crust is like the skin of an apple. It's about three to six miles long. Under the sea, it's only a few kilometers. Then you have the mantle, which is the majority, and it's 1,800 miles thick. Then you have the core. You have the outer core and the inner core. To be honest, they're both more or less the same, to be honest. Um, but just, just for your information, the deepest hole anybody's drilled is 12 kilometers. So that's actually gone into the mantle, I believe. But anybody know the reason why they had to stop drilling? Anybody can guess the reason? Because surely if you can do 12, why can't you do 13 or 14? Yeah. Is it heat from the mantle? Or? Yeah, it is. It's got too hot. Very good. Yeah. So that's why you just can't do it. It's a hidden world. And then you ask the question, well, how, how come then we know about this? Well, you know about it because if you hit an object with a hammer, it, it vibrates in a certain way. So if you hit the earth with an earthquake, <laughs> it vibrates in a certain way. So they know from the vibrations what's there because everything has a signal. Like, um, you can probably, if I hit metal or wood, you can probably hear the difference, isn't it? So similarly, if you hit different rocks, you can hear the difference. And that's what they use. They use that to understand what's there. So the, the earthquakes travel through the earth, they pick them up on the other side. And then they work it out what's there. That's how they know. So well done, scientists. Although you don't know where the water's come from, you know what's inside the earth. Well done. All right. We'll give you an A for that. All right. And then the life cycle of... Oh, I've got a bit of salt here. The life cycle of the sun. People often ask, you know, what's the... So we are... You can see that arrow now. Four and a half billion years. Yeah. So again, we are in the perfect time for the sun. Now, it's, gonna, it's actually started to get bigger now. But don't panic, right? Over the next billion years, it's going to get bigger and warmer. 
and people don't know how long the earth's going to survive it's a, they have different theories some say 500 million years the earth's going to start to die some say a billion years some say two but we don't know right but when it comes to about eight when it's getting pretty big i think we'd, there'll be no chance of life on earth i think it's getting bigger and bigger that when it becomes a red giant people actually say it'll be so big it'll reach the earth's orbit that's how big it's going to be so forget the earth's going to be gone by then and then it starts to disappear and all that's left is a small white ball called a white dwarf which is actually the size of the earth but it's a, it's the last remaining burning bits of the sun it's going to be quite hot but it's going to be really small and it'll be very dense so who knows you know if if we're in jannah Inshallah, right. you know, on the you know they have the grapevine in Jannah, you know the grapevine. Someone whispers, Do you know, remember that, remember that sun? Yeah, it's actually become a white dwarf now. Oh, okay, do you have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. Right. So who knows? We'll be sitting there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, but you know what? That's history. This is Jannah. Yeah. We don't care about that. Absolutely. Don't worry, we're going to give you a sense of humor slowly, inshallah, right? So, gradually. <laughs> right. Wa akhru da'wan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Right. Any questions? Can I ask a question, please? Um, what does Islam say about UFOs? Because I know UFOs. I don't think there's any fatwa on UFOs. But, I mean, my opinion is this. Uh, most UFO sightings some are lies. And some are just clouds, others are, you know, mixture of lightning and meteorological conditions. Some are experimental planes, and some are just jinns messing up people's minds. There's, there's no such thing as little green men and stuff. But there are stuff, stuff like jinns, and jinns can take different forms. So if people say, I've met this monster, I've met this thing, and it's true, it very, very it likely could be a jinn messing people up and confusing people. But there's no fatwa on it. No, there's no issue of fatwa. Any other questions? <coughs> it might be something really special, you know, it might be a, a veli traveling, you know, shining brightly, or an angel someone's lucky to see, who knows, you know, but I doubt it. I doubt it. If you, if you are lucky enough to experience the soul of a veli, what you'll experience is a beautiful smell, like roses, very, very sweet. There was a guy, um, uh, he used to know Hazrat Sahib, Rahmatullah, you know, the Hazrat Sahib was buried here. He used to know him as non-Muslim, and this guy used to smoke like a chimney, right? And his car was just a massive ashtray, basically. Now, not that I went in there, but it really stunk. That's what I was told. Even he said one day, he goes, you know what? After your father passed away, he goes, I had such a beautiful smell in my car, because he used to really like him. He goes, I had such a beautiful smell in my car of roses. I don't know where it came from. I can't imagine where it came from, because my car's like an ashtray. Yeah. And we said to him, it's Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah, he comes into, you know, just drifting past. Because the, the soul of a, of a, uh, a muttaki person smells really, really nice.